My brother Rob is a self-proclaimed prankster. He loves pulling pranks on everyone, including strangers. His pranks, in my opinion, aren't funny and may land him in serious trouble in the future. His idea of pranks is to antagonise someone until he gets bored and then calls it a prank. Rob's behaviour has seriously affected my relationship with him. When I first started dating my wife, Hallie, he made it a habit at every gathering I would attend to prank her. Not just an average whoopee cushion or a rubber snake, like hiding her glasses for hours on end or pouring vinegar in her tea. He claims he does it to make Hallie less posh and uptight. My family is like him as well, a bunch of self-proclaimed jokesters. I don't speak to them much. My wife Hallie gave birth to our beautiful son six months ago. According to my family, we've been rationing our family visits. The first time they saw our son was when he was four months old, and they haven't seen him since. My family isn't pleased with this arrangement, and they've been spamming me with calls, texts, and even emails asking and begging to see the baby. They want weekly or even daily visits, but that isn't possible. Rob invited us for his 30th birthday and asked Hallie to make his birthday cake. Not just any basic simple vanilla cake, but one of those fancy, detailed, decorated cakes that require lots of time and effort. I was hesitant to go, and even more hesitant to let Hallie make the cake, but Hallie assured me that it would be all right and attending the birthday might ease my family off our back. Rob paid her up front for the cake that he specifically wanted. Hallie also made cupcakes just because she wanted to. Ali and I arrived at my brother's house earlier than everyone else, and when everyone arrived, I was pleasantly surprised by how well the whole thing was going. They were very excited to meet my son, and they were very respectful towards Hallie. Rob kept telling Hallie to watch her back. I had no idea he meant it literally. While my wife was handling the cake, he came up behind her and poured cold water on her body. This obviously scared her a little and caused her to drop the cake. Rob got extremely angry, claiming that she dropped the cake on purpose. Ali started to apologise for dropping the cake while soaking wet, but I wasn't having any of it, and I admittedly lost my temper a little. I yelled at Rob for being irresponsible and irrational, grabbed the cupcakes that Hallie had made untouched, and left with my family. It was a little dramatic. The next day, I woke up to a string of angry texts from Rob, telling me I had no right to take the cupcakes away because he had rightfully paid for them, and this wouldn't have happened if Hallie could handle a little cold water. Ali thinks that I should at least apologise, hoping that it would make everything go away. Not the idiot. Um, your family sucks. Tell Rob that it's his fault that Hallie dropped the cake. Tell your family that you will be taking a break from them, since they seem incapable of treating you and your family with any respect or decency. Explain that this break will last at least until you and your wife receive a sincere apology from Rob, and a promise to cut this crap out from now on, and an acknowledgement from others that Rob's behaviour and treatment of your wife is unacceptable. More importantly, the brother needs therapy. He's a grown man that acts like a child wanting attention and will go so far as to ruin his own birthday, birthday cake and relationship with his brother to get it. OP, you need to go nuclear. You need to put your foot down and protect your family. Tell your parents this crap is why they don't see your kid. They can't be trusted. He's acting like a kid pulling a girl's hair in class. Does bro have a crush? Seriously. I have a little son who's decided he's a prankster. I got super hyped about it April 1st. He so far has hidden love notes from dad and then has been like, ah, they were from me. He's also turned clothes inside out. He moved my shoes from one shoe rack to the other shoe rack. I like being pranked. It cracks my husband and me up. The difference? My son is trying to make us laugh, not him. Opie's bro is not a prankster. He's doing mean crap and then laughing about it. Call me petty, but if I were in Opie's shoes, I would have dumped the cupcakes or a drink on him as soon as he poured water on her. Then, if he got mad, I would have pointed out that I just pranked him back, the way he pranked my wife. If that's unacceptable for him, then it is for everyone else. I'm, 25 male, upset about what she did. I needed to fly out from California to Washington because my dad had surgery after an accident, and I wanted to be there to help out my stepmom with him for a few days. So I was gone for a week and asked my sister if she could come over once a day to water my plants and check my mail. I also have, or had, two blue parakeets that I love, male and female. The female was ready to lay her eggs, so I already had a nest for them in their cage. Before my trip, she was already sitting on her eggs in the nest, and I told my sister, always to clean their cup of bird food and add more in every day and keep their water clean. 
This was explained to her twice because I wanted to ensure the birds and the eggs would be okay. The male would be bringing food for the female to eat while she's sitting on the eggs, so that's why I wanted to be sure she would follow what I did. Also, clean out the tray in their cage. Every day since leaving, I asked her if the birds had food, was their water clean, etc. She told me yes every time, so nothing to worry about. So I finally got back last night. The first thing was to check on my birds. Yeah, the cage was clean and their water was too. But guess what? All that was in their food cup was trash from the seeds they'd already eaten. The mother bird was, you know, and obviously the eggs didn't survive either. The only one still alive was the male, but he looked so sad. The first thing I noticed was that he was right on top of the nest box looking inside. I can't tell you how much I was crying taking them out. She had six eggs and she died still trying to incubate their babies. My sister claimed their cup was always full, so she assumed they didn't need to put more food in despite telling her to refill their cup with more food because they had nothing. She keeps saying it was an honest mistake and she didn't mean for them to die. And now I'm refusing to pay her the $200 I promised to drive here every day because she didn't follow everything instructed. She did everything else except this one thing, so it's not fair to refuse to pay her. She was calling me petty and a crappy brother after doing me a favour for taking the time out of her days, now only not to give her the money she needed. I'm still sad and angry about my birds, so that's why I feel like she doesn't deserve anything for being the one responsible. But maybe I am. Or who knows? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. If anything, she owes you money. Also, like, it sounds like the deceased animal was still in its cage. Didn't she pay enough attention to notice that? I'm so sorry for you and your little dude. He must be so heartbroken. I also want to add that if the food bowl looked full every day, and that's why she didn't replace the food, even though you can tell what's the seed and what's husk, that's still her fault. If she believed the birds needed food every day, but never needed to top it up, she should have been concerned and contacted you to say, hey, your bird's food is still full, so it looks like they might not be eating. It's really that basic. Exactly this. Did she really think the birds didn't need any additional food for a whole week? That's something she should have mentioned if that's what she really thought was going on. She didn't care enough to pick up the phone and send a text. It would have taken 45 seconds. I'd be telling everyone I knew that she house sat and didn't even notice the bird had died. That's even worse, honestly. I can kind of understand the food thing. If you didn't know any better, you can chalk that up to ignorance. She still did the wrong thing by not following instructions. But it was ignorant. But she was just looking at a dead bird for several days. She cleaned out a whole birdcage multiple times and neglected to... I don't even know. A whole bird? She's a monster. Growing up, I, 21 male, picked on my older sister, 24, a lot. I grew taller and became stronger than her when I was a teen, and while I never physically did anything to her, I got the confidence to attack and insult her verbally. I insulted her every day after school and made sure our parents couldn't hear me, and I often brought her to tears. It was harder to bring her to tears when she was in high school, but sometimes I did by saying some really hurtful stuff. When she went off to college, I realised how horrible I was being, stopped verbally abusing her and started to be a lot kinder when she would come over for breaks. Our relationship got a lot better and we've become pretty close since. I've been trying to get away from my younger identity. Yesterday, my sister came to visit me in my dorm room in my college and we were hanging out when all of a sudden she mentioned how I used to insult her and say horrible things to her when we were younger. I said I felt horrible about it, but then she asked me for an apology. I couldn't give it. Giving an apology acknowledges that my younger self was still part of me and still a part of my identity and I've been trying to get away from it for a long time. I told her I couldn't say sorry to her, and she got visibly upset and left my dorm room, and we haven't spoken since. So, am I the idiot? You are the idiot. I groaned when I read that phrase. Giving an apology is acknowledging that my younger self was still a part of me. No, that's not how it works. You apologise exactly because you aren't that person anymore. Likewise, like how do you say I'm not sorry without saying I'm not sorry? OP nailed it with that statement. OP, you do realise that the apology is for your sister. She needs this. I don't give a flying F who you are now. Sometimes you apologise because the other person needs it. But that would require empathy, something that both versions of you seem to be lacking. 
That phrase honestly made me burst out laughing. Some nuclear-grade narcissism right there. LMAO. So you abuse someone for years and still make it all about you when she tells you how you traumatized her and wants to be able to move past it finally? Typical abuser. You haven't changed as much as you think. OP, that's the most selfish thing you could possibly have said. Trying to separate yourself into two identities to ignore what you did is a cop-out. You bullied her. Now you should address it and make amends for it. You can't grow as a person until you accept and face the damage you caused. I pray this sister goes no contact with this schmuck. I, female 28, got engaged in late 2018 and planned to get married in mid-2020. However, the wedding was rescheduled to May of this year due to world events. I invited three close friends and my soon-to-be sister-in-law to be in my wedding party and paid for their dresses and any other associated costs. Between 2019, when bridesmaid dresses were purchased, and now, one bridesmaid, Jane, had put on significant weight. In mid-2021, she started a fitness journey to get her back to her original weight. A month ago, Jane came to me and told me she couldn't fit into a bridesmaid dress and she'd need a bigger dress. Since it had been two years since purchasing the dress, it obviously couldn't be returned. She gave it back since, but the value had significantly decreased, especially since the store now discounted the dress. For your information, the bridesmaid dresses weren't identical. We went with dresses that went well together and had a similar vibe. I spoke to Jane and told her how much I'd hopefully make from selling the dress and told her I'd give her that amount to buy a new dress, but I couldn't buy another one for her. She got upset and told me it wasn't her fault she gained weight and couldn't fit in the dress anymore, and since I was the bride, I should pay for the new dress. I told her that it wasn't personal and I'd have the same response for anyone else. I told her it didn't have to be expensive, it just had to fit the vibe or be somewhat similar to the old dress. I'm not a bridezilla or anything, so I didn't care too much about what dress she chose to wear and offered to help her find a new dress within budget. She said I was being an awful friend and shaming her for her weight. She said she couldn't afford a new dress and said I had to pay for her dress or she couldn't be at my wedding. I told her I couldn't spend more than I was offering for a new dress and understood that she couldn't be a bridesmaid and I hoped she'd be able to make it to the wedding as a guest. I tried wrapping it up, but she wouldn't leave. She teared up and called me cheap for not paying for a bridesmaid dress since I'd paid for everyone else's, and that if I wanted my friend there, I'd actually make an effort and brought up how much we were spending for our wedding, and how an extra small purchase would be nothing. I won't lie, this did upset me. I told her if she didn't want to buy a new dress, the only other options were not to come or to find a way to fit into the old dress. She broke down crying and ran out and later told others in the bridal party that I told her that if she didn't lose weight, I would kick her out of the bridal party. Thankfully, I'd already talked to them before this, and they didn't believe it, but now I'm getting pressure to buy her a new dress, so we can just move on and get over it. I feel like at this point, I'm unsure if I'm just being stubborn and stupid, sticking to my decision and having a backbone, or both. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. She's currently on her compass of shame, so it's likely she's angry at herself for the weight gain and is placing it on you, but it isn't your fault. If she apologises and backs down soon, I still have her as a guest, but under no circumstances a bridesmaid anymore. She went to try and make you look bad to your friends. That's a whole other thing than asking for advice or backup. Enjoy your wedding. OP isn't saying, you're fat, you can't be a bridesmaid. She's offered solutions and assistance and the friend has refused and is demanding OP spend double the cost on her as the other bridesmaids. I would never assume I'm entitled to someone else's money, especially when they'd already paid for it once. If a replacement was needed because of something on my end, that's my burden to bear, not the money of the person generous enough to provide the money once already. You don't understand, it's not her fault she gained weight. What if, in another few weeks, she puts on more, or loses more, or any other circumstance? At the end of the day, you did buy her a bridesmaid's dress. If she needs to change it, that's on her now. I'm not sure you'll want this girl at your wedding if she's behaving like this. I'm not sure it will go down drama-free if she is there. My boyfriend came home from work very frustrated and began to rant about the horrible meeting he had due to an annoying female account executive. I asked why she was annoying and he said she talked out of turn. I asked why it was out of turn and he said C-level executives were present, so she shouldn't talk unless they gave her permission to. I asked, well, is she the account executive for their account? This is a meeting between a tech company that handles their software and Boyfriend's oil and gas company. And he said yes. 
So I asked, well, what did she say? He said she introduced everyone and then began to talk about the purpose of the meeting and then began to lay out the agenda. I was confused because I'm an account manager and this is pretty standard. And I asked him then who else was supposed to do that? He said, well, she was supposed to do that, but she wasn't supposed to say anything until the sea level gave her the go-ahead. Maybe this is different in oil and gas, but I never waste time starting meetings by getting permission from my boss to start if everyone is present. I asked if he talked before he was asked to, and he said yes to ask questions, but it was okay because he was an analyst. I'm like, yes, but the account executive is supposed to do intros, etc. So why was she annoying? He argued she was taking charge in a room full of executives, and she should let them take the lead. I was getting suspicious because I know sea level people, and I asked if there was a single woman at sea level, and he said no. So I told him he was only annoyed because the account executive was a woman and if she was a man, he wouldn't think she did anything wrong. He argued, no, it's because she spoke out of turn. And I told him, account executives and account managers are supposed to do that, and he was just annoyed a woman was talking over a bunch of men. He argued that was ridiculous, and he just didn't like how she took charge when everyone else was higher than her. He got annoyed with me and avoided me for the rest of the night. Not the idiot. Annoying and spoke out of turn are phrases that seem to be used disproportionately against women in the workplace. Unless he's in the military, I've never come across a corporate workplace requiring superiors' permission to speak. I'm a much lower level than an accounts manager, and if I'm hosting or running a meeting, I just do it. My bosses don't want to micromanage, they just want me to do my job. Not the idiot. Your boyfriend is telling you who he is. Someone who believes that women must obtain permission to speak from higher-ranking men, even when they're doing exactly what they've been hired to do, a.k.a. a misogynist. I would guess that this isn't the only red flag he's waving. OMG, this is so true. He's a walking red flag. He came home ranting and raving because a co-worker did something relatively small, like full-on coming home in a bad mood, fuming about it. Apparently, this ruined his day when, she checked notes, did her job, and then when OP, another woman, didn't agree with him, he gave her the silent treatment. He sounds like a catch.